Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, I'm going to show you how to paint with super granulating watercolors and inks, so stick around. I recently started this sketchbook. It is my 27th sketchbook, and I've got a 28th downstairs also going. And I've already been using some of my super granulating watercolors here to do some paintings in this sketchbook. And I got a request on a recent video asking if I could demonstrate how to use some of these materials that I often highlight as my favorite materials to use, like super granulating watercolors and inks. And so today I wanted to show you some examples of how I use both of those materials to make some cute animals and just my fun paintings that I like to spend time making in my free time. So first I'm going to make this bunny. It is based on an old painting I made. I'm starting with this color right here. I'm just going to point out the colors to you as I as I pick them out here in my super granulating watercolor palette right here that I put together. I've featured it in a bunch of other videos so definitely just search you know creating cute art super granulating and you'll see a ton of videos on these beautiful paints in my history of videos on this channel over the last year plus. So the first thing I like to do when I'm using super granulating watercolors, literally I just pick a color on my little swatch sheet there and decide what I want to do the background. And if it's a landscape and the focus really is the background, I still pick the colors that I want to focus on blending together in the background. But I really like to do a water heavy wash of color because super granulating watercolors are shown to their best advantage when you let them move and groove in water and you don't try to do super concentrated areas the way you would maybe with regular watercolor, just sort of crystal clear watercolor. With a super granulating watercolor, you want to let it granulate. And the way to let it granulate is to feed it water. <laughs> so feed it plenty of water. This ain't, this ain't gremlins. You don't have to worry about it. So um, I was so, if you guys have watched my videos, you know I was terrified of gremlins. So that is an OG reference there if you want to go back and see if you ever watched that video about me being terrified of gremlins. Um, but this little bunny is actually based on a reference from my own art and it is a sticker on my Redbubble shop. You can get it on a bunch of things but I actually have it as a sticker on one of my old sketchbooks that I've toured for this channel so you will have probably seen the bunny that is the reference for this bunny and now I'm just redoing it instead of doing it in I believe that one was in acrylic whether I think it was acrylic gouache um, this is of course in super granulating watercolors. I'm using one of my favorite watercolor brushes here. This is just a silver black velvet in a big size. I think this one's either a 12 or a 14 and it's just so much fun. So I love the colors. I'm enjoying just the process of making a cute animal by again, getting the background done and then really just focusing on values. When I'm painting with super granulating watercolors, I don't really mind if the hue, so the actual color, what we think of as the color, is exactly realistic or what an animal would actually look like. In this case, I picked the background color that I wanted, which was that beautiful blue, and then I picked purples um, for and, and moon glow, I believe I also used for the inside of the bunny just because I think those colors look good together. So I chose what's called an analogous color palette for this, as you can see. <laughs> Again, showing you some of the colors I'm choosing to use with blues and purples and grays because those are near each other on the color wheel. That's called an analogous color palette. Sometimes when I'm painting with super granulating watercolors, I will pick a monochromatic uh, color palette. So like all versions of purple or all versions of blue, or you might pick a complementary color palette where I might've made this bunny oranges and yellows, and that would have been the complementary color scheme to the blue that I chose for the background. Once I've sort of figured out the color scheme, then I focus on, as I said, the values. And so just to remind you, if you don't know what that is, that is the darks to lights. So just making sure that I have high contrast. And that's what you're starting to see here as I'm making the far side of the bunny's face much darker than the foreground, the part that's closer to us as the viewer. Um, I want this bunny to stand out off the page a little bit. And that background is very much what I would call a medium, like a mid value. <laughs> it's not too dark, it's not too light. And so I'm leaving the extra light lights and the extra dark darks on the bunny itself. So that's the choice I made. Those are the kinds of choices that I recommend you think about when you're sitting down to paint with super granulating colors, because once you've done that, 
the best part about painting with super granulation in your watercolors is letting them be unpredictable because they are unpredictable and that's why I love them so much. You can predict and you can plan the value range, the hues, the color scheme, but you can't plan what's going to happen if you put water on the page with colors that granulate <laughs> because that's the whole point is they're going to move and groove and do their own thing and you can watch them move in the water and it is so relaxing. It is like a spa day for me to watch ink and granulation happen in water. And so that's the reason that I'm featuring those two media here today because those are very unpredictable and obviously I'm not done. I'm just enjoying this bunny and wanted to show you. <laughs> <laughs> up close. I thought he was coming out really cute um, and just so chubby and adorable. I love this little bunny. Um, but because I was done with the background, I like to take the tape off once I'm done with the background. I don't know why I'm giving you so many close-ups. I obviously am recording this as a voiceover. I did continue working on this and made the darks darker in this bunny. Maybe I didn't record it. Okay, that's why. Uh, this bunny does look a little different now. I made a lot more of a range of values than you're seeing there. Here are the inks that I wanted to just show you what I mean by these medium moving in water. Um, and these in particular, I obviously wrote down the names of the inks and I also put three different granulating colors on this page to show the difference. You can pause and write down the name of any ink you want if you're interested in them. Um, I can certainly leave links as well below if you are interested. But you can see here sheen. As you see in that pink one, there's like a green line in the middle, a couple of green lines. And in the blue one, there were some red lines. In the purple one, there was some pale green going on. Um, that is called sheening and shading. And that's a feature of inks. This is another cute granulating owl that I made. This is the granulation background, as you can see. Actually, this probably demonstrates better what I'm talking about with kind of do the background and then put the darks and the lights in the middle in your animal. This one is with an ink. So I let the ink just pool and be its own beautiful self in the sky. And then I just used water to pull some of that ink down into the mountains. And I love how that came out. So I did that off camera just on my own and that's what made me want to include inks in this video. So the first painting I'm going to do is with this Dea Trementis pearlescent color. So it has actual flecks of sparkle in it. I will warn you, I love this ink and I have another one called Halogen Green Copper. I love these inks, but they are not great with pens. They have clogged up every pen I've tried to put them in but they're fabulous for dip writing. Like if you dip your pen in it, as opposed to trying to fill your pen with it, and they're amazing for painting. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. I often will do a sketch, but I sometimes don't. So with this whale, I did do a sketch to show you what it would be like for a more planned out painting and for the next uh, set of paintings with the next inks, I didn't do any sketching at all. So what I did was I painted with water, like the wet and wet technique that you would use with watercolor, the entire top part of this whale so that the ink could just move and flow and like breathe inside of the water and do what it does. Because much like with granulation in watercolors, the hues, the dyes in ink, because it's not, they're not always pigment based, they're actually usually dye based and this is dye based the dye separates and moves and flows and it's called chromatography. And you can actually see the chromatography of your ink when all the different colors that make up this one ink that you only see the one color in separate out in the water and it's just dreamy. Like, I don't know how else to say it, it's so dreamy. And with this particular ink, it's even dreamier because when this dries, those rose gold copper type sparkles that are in the ink, that are suspended in the ink, as it dries, that's when they show up. That's when they RSVP to the party and it is stunning and I love it so much. And it's why I'm so obsessed with ink. And I know all of you will ask me, why do you love ink so much? I never saw an artist who just loves ink so much. This is why. Do you see what I'm talking about? Are you with me? Do you hear what I'm saying when I show you this? I know by now, yep, you probably are. So I did the top half first, all water, then heavy uh, laying down of the inks in the corners and letting them sort of move towards the middle. That needs to completely dry 
before you go and move on to something else. It's kind of like with watercolor, but even more aggressive, where if you already have a wet wash, you need it to completely dry or you're going to have bleed over into the wet, the new wet area because ink, much like watercolor, wants to find the water. Oh, okay. As I'm watching this playback, I love this painting so much and I honestly could have stopped there if I wanted to, but I just wanted to add these details. So with these details, I laid down a very bare minimum pale blue wash for the underside and then I'm just going back in once that's completely dry with a size zero brush and just doing the fine details like the eye and all those little lines and then I came in with a fountain pen and wrote the name of the ink so that you could see that but yeah I have another video where I'll show you or a pictures at the end where I show you the sparkles but aren't they just so pretty so with this one uh, another uh, commenter actually one that comments on a lot of my videos a very sweet wonderful subscriber who I actually email with quite frequently uh, made a suggestion that I do some cacti inspired by the cactus fruit eel pink ink that I got in my last ink extravaganza haul that was my prior video last week and that ink is inked up in this pink pen that you see off to the side and so I wanted to do the actual cactus fruit flowers with that pink ink and I wanted to use this Navajo turquoise for the cacti for one of them and then I'm using a Sailor Studio ink for the other cacti and this is the example that I wanted to tell you about with no sketch if you draw with ink using your fountain pen like I'm doing here if you put water over it, the lines will absolutely blur because again, those dyes want to travel in the water and they'll travel right on away from the line that you made. Sometimes some of the lines stay, much like with a Caran d'Ache, a watercolor crayon or a watercolor pencil. Sometimes the, some of the lines will stay, but a lot of them blur out or just disappear. It's just like that with fountain pen ink if you are using it in a pen. And so you're seeing me use uh, drops of ink from the tip of the pen which you can do if you prime the cartridge or prime the pump if it's a piston and it'll just shoot ink right out and I just did that right there um, and then I'm actually just moving it around with the feed of the pen instead of with a brush just to see what happens and what ended up happening was there were a bunch of scratches this is watercolor paper watercolor paper is not ideal for painting with ink it's not like watercolor on watercolor paper where it, it's perfect and it's wonderful and it's made for that. Ink will bleed on the texture of this type of paper. If it were hot pressed, it would be better. Um, but oh, I love this pen. I just got this one too last week and it's so beautiful. Um, but what you actually really want for this is fountain pen paper. And these drawings and paintings would be better on fountain pen paper. But I don't care because this is my sketchbook. I want to have fun in it. I don't mind if there's bleeding. I don't mind if some of the lines like on the back of the whale, some of those lines bled a little bit. I don't care. I think it looks so cool. So just know you're not going to get the best effect from your inks using it on especially hot press, I'm oh, sorry, cold press watercolor paper like this with texture. You want a nice smooth paper. Um, it can bleed through if the paper's not thick enough. It didn't bleed through at all with this paper, this watercolor paper. So here I am with my cactus fruit eel, just having fun drawing. This has completely dried at this point or mostly dried. I was okay again if this bled into a little bit of wetness. I thought that would look cool too. But as you're painting with ink, you just want to think about, do I want water down first? Do I want to put a line down and then blend it out with water? Do I want to, like you could make a mountain range like I did in the first uh, picture I showed you with ink and just let water go under the ink and drag down. And that's a really cool way to make a fade out effect. You, you just have so many techniques you can use. I came back in on this uh, there's my Galen leather pouch I just wanted to show you with my fountain pens I love that thing I also have a video on that here on the channel but the one on the left I loved as it was the one on the right I felt needed more detail and so I went back over that one again with fountain pen over the top so you can just do layer after layer after layer as long as you're letting the layers dry in between uh, unless you're going for a blended effect a blend out effect um, it's really really versatile and this is why I love fountain pens for art because literally everything you see here I could have taken three pens out with me and it out and about and usually I would take this whole thing but you can take three pens with three different colors and a water brush and make so much art so I hope that you really enjoyed this video if you did please remember to leave me a comment and a like check if you're subscribed if you're not I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel it really helps me out until next time remember create something cute